Hey guys, how's it going? So, see right up there? That's my kitchen. See that right there? That makes a lot of dust and a lot of noise. So, this week's project, I gotta build a door for right here. So I just recently replaced all the interior doors upstairs in the main level. What I used are these single panel holocore doors, which I really like. And these holocore doors are really practical. They're re relatively cheap for what they are. But in this situation here, I need to block out a lot of noise, so a solid core door would be more suited. So I priced out the material I needed at an MDF, and it worked out to 55 bucks taxes in. I bought a half sheet, a three quarter inch MDF, and I bought a full sheet, a 5 eighths MDF. So let's get started. To get started on this project, I first took some very careful measurements of the door opening. Then I went ahead and made a cut list and I ripped all my styles and rails to 5 inches. Except for the bottom rail, I'm going to make that 10 inches wide. A standard door thickness is inch and 3 eighths. So to get that thickness, I'm going to take a piece of 5 eighths and a piece of 3 quarter and laminate those together. So at this point in the project, you might be wondering why I chose MDF for the material opposed to something like hardwood or even construction grade material. And while well, hardwood is just too expensive, but I did consider construction grade material, but what I was mainly worried about is warpage. And if you take a look at this 2x10 I have on the shelf, I just bought that about a month ago. It was somewhat straight and just sitting there, it warped that much. And with only a top and bottom rail in this door, nothing in between to really support it, I was just really worried that it would eventually warp the door. Because it made such a mess during glue up, I couldn't just uh, clean up the edges by running along the fence. I had to actually make a little sled to clean up the first edge, and then I could use the table saw fence to do the other side. Here I'm just cutting the rails to final length using my table saw sled. Then it was time to make a pile of dust. Uh, I'm going to use my 3 8 inch dado stack to cut a groove along all my styles and rails and my mortise is actually going to be 2 inches deep so there's a lot of cutting to do here and I just took my time and went really slow until I got that center cut all done on all the styles and rails. So working with MDF, it's absolutely crucial that these mortises end up dead center because I'm not going to be able to sand anything flush later. So I just really took my time here and kind of inched up on it until I got a really nice fit for a 5 8 panel. Now it's time to cut the tenons on all the rails and I just simply did this with my miter gauge and still using my 3 8 inch dado stack. Well the last thing to do before glue up is just to make the center panel which I just cut out a 5 8 MDF. I cut the width first and then cut the length using the skill saw. Glue up was made pretty simple with my end vise here. I just started out by putting that rail in the vise and then dropping my panel in. Once I had the panel in, it was just a matter of putting glue on all the Morrison tenons and fitting everything together. So I struggled a little bit trying to get that top rail on, but I did eventually get it to go. Um, once it was all together, I just measured corner to corner to make sure everything was square. So unfortunately, I did make a pretty big mistake here. You can see the corner was closest to us. There's a little bit of a gap there. And that's just because I made the tenon too long. And at this point, it was just too hard to get that rail back off. So luckily, this is just a painted door. And I will be able to fill that in with spackle. And you'll probably never ever notice it. With the construction of the door complete, I decided to put my first coat of primer on. 
but then I realized it was probably a better idea to get the mortises cut for the hinges as well as the hole drilled for the doorknob before I put any of the top coats on. I'll just save that for once the door is installed. For laying out for the hinges, I just make sure I don't forget to add 3 16 of an inch for a gap between the door jamb and the door itself. Then I'll use a square to set the width of the mortise and this will also act as a reference mark to trace out my hinge. To actually hollow out the motors, I just use one of these trim routers with a straight bit installed. I do it all freehand and I just take my time, go really slow and follow my line as close as possible. Uh, with a little bit of practice, you'd be surprised how accurate you can do this uh, freehand. Drill a hole for the doorknobs. I just got one of these little jigs, so it makes it a lot easier to line up the holes and get the right distance from the edge and all that stuff. And I can finally install the door. I installed the hinge halves on the door and the jam first, but one of them wasn't quite lining up, so I actually had to just loosen that bottom hinge a little bit and it popped right into place and seemed to fit really well. I never mentioned it, but I did install a brand new door jam in here and I'm just installing the door stop on it there now. Notice all the dust on those stairs? Hopefully this door is going to solve that problem. Well guys, all in all, I'm really happy on the way this turned out and I think it's a really good alternative to buying a solid core door. If you like this project, please give me a thumbs up and I'm Ryan Nodwell. Thanks for watching.